Hello there. Good evening to you. Uh, welcome to this Good Friday service. It is basically going to be five acts of worship, um, five hymns or songs that are directly focused on um, the cross and what happened on Good Friday. Um, in between, I'll be working my way through um, uh, Mark chapter 15 and each song, well, some of the songs are going to be introduced by other people in terms of what it means to them and how the lyrics and the song have spoken to them at points through their life. So hopefully, um, hopefully we can have a time where it's a bit more reflective and a bit more, well, maybe a bit quieter. I guess we'll see. Um, but it's just an opportunity to try and uh, place the events of Good Friday central in our thinking and thoughts for the next 45 minutes or so. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're here because we recognise our need to be here. Because we need your sacrifice. We're here because we accept the reality that there was no sacrifice prior to Christ. There was no life that was perfect enough. There was no human being whose purity and life given back to God the Father was done with such completion and such perfection. We accept, Lord, that all have fallen short of the glory of God, ourselves most assuredly included. And so, Lord, as we reflect on the events, the emotions, the cruelty, and the horror of what was clearly a good Friday for all of Christ's followers, but a truly heinous Friday for him. We ask, Lord, that you would give us the bravery to loiter at what we would rather turn our head away from. Give us the courage to stay and see what has brought us purity, what has meant our sins are forgiven. So Lord, we seek, as they would say in olden times, we seek to tarry with you through the worst day in your life because we seek to give you thanks that you gave us everything that we might have eternity with you. Lord Jesus, may we be clear about our own shortcomings, not dealing with them in the abstract, not dealing them, dealing with them as a, as a concept or an idea. Lord Jesus, we are sorry for those things in our life that we have done wrong. The things that recur and we know they recur. The things that we don't even know about. The things that used to be there and are now gone. Lord, for all of these, we lay them at the foot of the cross and give you your worth and seek to worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. These are the opening verses of chapter 15 of Mark. And as soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. And they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate. And Pilate asked them, are you the king 
of the Jews? And he answered him, You have said so. And the chief priests accused him of many things. And Pilate again asked him, Have you no answer to make? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further answer. So the pilot was amazed. When you um, when you start with a hymn that was written in 1664, I'm assuming you might um, think that it's not going to be my absolutely favourite hymn. What I realise is, as I come to uh, Good Friday as a minister trying to select worship, I realise it is actually quite difficult. Um, and it's difficult because everybody rushes to the empty tomb. I guess that makes sense. But I think it's also absolutely crucial for Christians to remember Good Friday. Can I put the thought in your head, you are forgiven, not because the tomb was empty, but because the cross was full full of the sacrifice that God the Father sent to ensure that you and I were free. That message has been true down through the 2000 years since. And certainly in 1667, um, this um, was written by Samuel Crossman and um, it's called My Song is Love Unknown. The verse that gets me every time, um, the verse that I think, see, I don't know why I remember this hymn. I thought it was my Aunt Mary. She was in the Glasgow Phoenix Choir. I thought I, I'd heard her singing it, but my mother assures me that's not the case. Um, the thing is, when you've got a hymn that's 357 years old, I'm not sure where I would have heard this. The point is, it's in my brain and especially the third verse. Sometimes they strew his way and his sweet praises sing, resounding all the day hosannas to their king. The verses are eight lines and the first four of this verse are obviously their triumphal entry, Palm Sunday, but not the next four verses, the next four lines. Then crucify in all their breath. Then crucify is all their breath. And for his death, they thirst and cry. It just very powerfully puts into my life, and I think to many, the realisation we try our best. We, we, we want to serve Christ more fully, more, more in a more perfect way, and we fail. Because like the people in Jerusalem, there are times in our life where we worship him and hold him high and, and give him the praise. And then there are times when we, we go our own way. We start tonight's uh, praise of God by singing, My song is love unknown.
at the feast, Pilate used to release for them one prisoner for whom they asked. And among the rebels in prison who had committed murder in the insurrection, there was a man called Barabbas. And the crowd came up and began to ask Pilate to do as he usually did for them. And he answered them saying, do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he perceived it was out of envy that the chief priests had delivered him up. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release for them Barabbas instead. And Pilate again said to them, Then what shall I do with the man they called the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him. And Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Come now to our next song and to our next person to introduce, Gail. Hello, I've been asked to introduce the next song um, and I've also been asked to say a little bit about it, what it means to me. Um, this song came out in 1997 and that was kind of a, a key point in my life. Um, 1997, I've been 18. Um, and I remember this song very clearly. So from my late teens, my early 20s, I remember singing this song a lot. I remember uh, being in church services and youth services, because at that point I would have been a youth, um, and singing with many, many, many other people my age. Um, and it was just a really poignant song that followed me around a lot. Um, I listened to it just before I came on to do this and um, actually kind of made me tearful at points because I can remember singing and worshipping. And um, so the next song we're going to listen to is Matt Redman and it's Once Again. Jesus Christ, I think upon your sacrifice, you became nothing, poured out to death. Many times I wondered at your gift of life, and I'm in that place once again. I'm in that place once again. Once again I look upon the cross where you died I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside Once again I thank you, once again I pour out my life Exalted to the highest place, King of the heavens, where one day I'll bow. But for now, I marvel at this saving grace, and I'm full of praise once again. Yes, I'm full of praise once again. Once again I look upon the cross where you died I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside Once again I thank you, once again I pour out my life Thank you for the cross, thank you for the cross for the cross, my friend. Thank you for the cross, your cross. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross. 
Once again I thank you Once again I pour out my life Soldiers led Jesus away inside the palace that is the governor's headquarters and they called together the whole battalion and they clothed him in a purple cloak and twisting together a crown of thorns they put it on him and they began to salute him hail king of the jews and they were striking his head with a reed and spitting on him and kneeling down in homage to him and when they had mocked him they stripped him of his purple cloak and put his own clothes on him and they led him out to crucify him this is a very different uh, next act of worship and it's introduced by Liz. But what's so striking, if you reflect on what Gail said and think about what Liz says, is how similar they are. Liz. Our next hymn is Man of Sorrow. A powerful hymn with beautiful words. I have listened to various versions of this hymn on YouTube. Some very modern, and some sung in a church situation. Jesus bore our shame being one of the lines. I can recall singing this hymn with the church choir and find this verse very moving. Lifted up was he to die, it is finished was his cry. Now in heaven exalted high, hallelujah. What a saviour. What a saviour indeed. So I now hope that everyone will enjoy either singing or just listening to the beautiful words of Man of Sorrow.
the third hour when they crucified him and the inscription on the charge against him read the king of the Jews and with him they crucified two robbers one on his right and one on his left and those who passed by derided him shaking their heads and saying ha you would destroy the temple and rebuild it in the three days? Save yourself and come down off the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes mocked him to one another, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ the King of Israel, come down from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also reviled him. We come again to another song that um, takes a different slant on it and certainly has a different musical style. And this one's going to be introduced by... Jackie. Good evening. The song that I would like to talk to uh, you about tonight is How Deep the Father's Love for Us. And again, it's a favourite of mine because one, it reminds me of uh, those times when I was a lot younger, free and single, and uh, would go off on mission with Operation Mobilisation. And during worship, this would be one of the songs that we would sing. But I realise the content of the song is just so powerful and it takes us through that part of the Easter story where Jesus chooses to have separation from the Father so that we can be saved, that by dying on the cross, our wounds are healed. And uh, although I don't totally understand as a Christian what that truly meant, what I do know is that he loves us so, so much that he gave up his life and experienced separation from the Heavenly Father in order to uh, allow us to have life and allow us to have freedom and to allow us to have liberty. So the song brings that home to me. But as well as that, what it does is it gives me a, a challenge because I think there are times in, in my Christian life when I think that was a good day as a Christian. Um, I did well there. I, I, you know, I spoke about Jesus or you know, I planted a seed. And it's not that I intentionally want to take the, um, the, the, the benefit of that or the reward for that. But what the song talks about is not boasting, not boasting in what we do and not boasting in what we can do because it all comes from God anyway, but just to boast on the fact that he died for us and that he gave us freedom. And that's why the song, along with the tune, which I feel is just a very powerful tune, um, means so much to me. Let's sing How Deep the Father's Love for Us. <laughs> Love for us, how vast beyond all. 
over the whole land until the ninth hour and at the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice Eloi Eloi lema sabachthani which means my God my God why have you forsaken me and some of the bystanders hearing it said behold he is calling Elijah and someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood facing him saw that this way he breathed his last, he said, truly this man was the son of God. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, there are no words, there are no hymns, there are no songs, there are no praises, and there are no lives that do justice to what you did for us on the cross on Good Friday. Help us for we recognise we can, in our familiarity, become familiar 
with anything. Save us from becoming familiar and blasé about anything that we might not give its true value to. But if that's true generally, we pray that most of all for this day of all days. Lord, may we always completely and as wholly as we are able give the premier place in our lives to you. Every morning, every afternoon, and every evening. You gave everything for us. Help us to similarly respond with our lives. You became sin for us. You took the blame. You bore the wrath. We ask, Heavenly Father, that we would play our part, that your Son's kingdom would grow and be proclaimed, and the central truth in this world would be shown to be precisely what it always has been, the death and saving power of Jesus and what he did for us on the cross. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. Come now to our last song. Um, this is kind of, I hope you recognise, we've, we've tried to kind of balance it between slightly more modern ones and slightly more uh, older ones. Um, so this is definitely 100% a hymn, but it does just go to the very core um, of what it is to bring our worship before our Saviour. Um, so it's relatively modern, although it is a hymn, and it's another one by uh, Stuart Townend. Obviously, it's a family thing, and we just like Stuart Townend, full stop. Um, oh, to see my name written in the wounds, for through your suffering I am free. The, talk, the song takes us to the very core of what it is to follow Christ. All of us do it imperfectly, but all of us need to come to the central truth on this day of all days. Without him, we are lost in our sin. What a love, what a cost. We stand forgiven at the cross. Take that amidst the many other things that, that you could take from this particular service. I hope um, you have a good Good Friday. And by that I mean, take seriously the reality of what's been said, certainly not just by me, but by um, folks here tonight. Can I thank all the folks who contributed and recognise just very uh, appreciative and um, because I realise this one's a wee bit different and it's not necessarily every person that can, you know, speak about a hymn in the way that folks have. Thank you that you did. The Power of the Cross. <laughs>
of reflection on the central point of the Christian faith. Leave this time focused on the blood and sacrifice of your Saviour and seek to live your lives as a gift back to him such that our lives are our true worship. Do this in the name of the Father. Do this in the name of the Son. And do this in the name of the Holy Spirit and all who were going to try said Amen. Good night and I hope you have a good Easter weekend. Hope to see you sometime, whether online or in church, this Easter Sunday. Bye to you all.